This is how I'll always remember you. Surrounded by winter, forever young, forever beautiful. Rest well, my love. The monster who took you from me will soon learn that revenge is a dish best served cold. Many consider Batman the Animated Series to be the definitive version of the Dark Knight and his world. Its tone, mood, and grasp of the character make it a favorite of fans far and wide. Not only that, but the series has provided both outstanding individual stories and versions of characters that are often far better received than their interpretations in other forms of media. After a quarter of a century since its premiere on September 5th, 1992, we can see its influence on both a series-wide and episode-by-episode -episode basis. Created by Bruce Timm and Eric Radomski, Batman the Animated Series blends a timeless take on the Cape Crusader with noir aesthetics that infuse its animation style, storytelling mechanics, and characterization. For many of a certain age, the series was an introduction to Batman and Gotham City, even before the live-action films or even the comic books. From voice actor Kevin Conroy's take on Batman, to the iconic opening titles, to the numerous pitch-perfect tales of dark heroics, this animated interpretation of Batman often captured what has made the character beloved for generations. The stories of Batman the Animated Series are so strong that they have actually influenced comics themselves, making writers alter the looks, personalities, and origins of some characters to be more in line with their cartoon counterparts. No example is stronger than that of Mr. Freeze, a throwaway villain from the 60s who had been generally forgotten until his reintroduction in the episode Heart of Ice. Not only is it the reason why Mr. Freeze became an iconic villain within Batman lore, Heart of Ice is also one of the best Batman stories told in any medium. Prior to his appearance in Heart of Ice, Mr. Freeze, originally known as Mr. Zero, was an uninteresting scientist turned thief who used a freezing gun and needed to stay in sub-zero temperatures due to a cryogenic chemical accident. There wasn't much to him, and he was rarely used, even if his central gimmick was fairly strong. But that all changed in Heart of Ice, when writer Paul Dini, who would go on to write many of the series' best episodes, and producer Bruce Timm, who also directed this episode, decided to completely overhaul him in appearance, demeanor, and backstory for a single, wonderfully constructed episode within the show's first season. Originally airing on September 7, 1992, Dini's episode is a fairly simple tale of revenge while also serving as an origin story for the villain. In the midst of a Gotham heatwave, Batman must investigate a strange series of robberies that leave both buildings and victims frozen solid. Like any great episode of the animated series, the central mystery plays out at a methodical yet consistently satisfying pace. This is noir storytelling that is not only greatly enjoyable thanks to the plot mechanics, but because the central characters are so interesting. Eventually, the Dark Knight's detective skills lead him to the perpetrator, Mr. Freeze. Over the course of the episode, Batman's investigation and an eventual confession by Freeze reveal a tragic motivation. Within that core emotional power lies the strength of this episode and its central villain. Freeze was once Dr. Victor Freeze, a cryogenic scientist who embezzled funds and ran secret experiments that the company worked at to cryogenically freeze his terminally ill wife, Nora. Unfortunately, Freeze's employer Ferris Boyle violently interrupted the experiment to stabilize Nora's frozen condition, causing her death and exposing Freeze to chemicals that altered his biology. Now, Freeze can only live in sub-zero temperatures and is hell-bent on revenge against the man who cost him everything. It's this tragic backstory that makes Freeze into a truly sympathetic villain, and is also an original addition by Dini. Freeze's cold, emotionless demeanor, which is grippingly portrayed by Michael Ansara's calculated and distant voice acting, is in sharp contrast to the man who was so heartbroken over his wife's illness that he risked everything to save her. Take, for instance, Freeze's tragic, desperate cries in the midst of the accident. Now compare them to his mechanical proclamations later in the episode, and you see just how much he's changed. I'm beyond emotions. They've been frozen dead in me. Time after time, Freeze voices his lack of feelings. But what many would guess, and what is eventually revealed in Heart of Ice, is that Freeze's insistence that he has no more emotions is a lie. Like those who have suffered great loss in real life, Freeze has buried his immense emotional scars as deep as possible. His focus on revenge against Boyle is indicative of his rage and sorrow, but it is only at the episode's end when we see the true Freeze. Locked in his refrigerated cell at Arkham Asylum after being defeated by Batman, Freeze stares at a wind-up ballerina he keeps as a memento of his wife, 
bringing Heart of Ice to a mournful close that proves this animated series sought to do more than typical superhero thrills. I failed you. I wish there were another way for me to say it. But I cannot. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you hear me somehow, some place, some place where a warm hand waits for mine. With only 22 minutes, Deanie is able to tell a compelling story, turn Mr. Freeze into a well-rounded character, and give ample screen time to the always fascinating Batman. That's a marvel of efficient storytelling. Deanie plays a great balancing act between progressing the central mystery and developing characters so that both can coalesce in the end for greater emotional impact, even when given relatively little time to develop. Unlike many other stories within the animated series, Batman is not the focal point of Heart of Ice. While we uncover the mystery alongside him, the story's emotion and meaning is rooted in Freeze. That's not to say that the Cape Crusader is unimportant. We still root for him and side with him in the conflict. Compared to the vengeful villain, the standoffish Dark Knight seems downright warm and friendly. Sooner or later, all who stand in my way must feel the icy touch of death. While he is committed to stopping Freeze, Batman also sympathizes with him and similarly dislikes the slimy boil voiced by Mark Hamill before he began his legendary tenure as the voice of the Joker. Like every great animated series episode, the story is incredibly strong on all fronts, with the voice acting being a major component of its success. Conroy, who brought pathos and layers with only his voice, will always be the perfect embodiment of Batman, and Michael Ansara's performance as Freeze is suitably chilling until the story shifts gears into the melancholic and heartbreaking. Top that off with the always wonderful score by the late Shirley Walker and great visuals. The greatest episodes of Batman the Animated Series could work just as well as radio plays, with the dynamic vocals, warm sound design, and compelling dialogue not needing visuals. I must say, you're showing a surprising amount of compassion for that man, considering he would surely have left you to die in his place. <laughs> Of course, the series animation is part of the reason why it has remained iconic. Artist and writer Mike Mignola, who would go on to create and draw Hellboy, created Freeze's new look. His simple yet eye-catching cold blue suit has hints of steampunk while looking modern enough, a feature often seen in Mignola's designs. Importantly, Freeze's glowing red goggles help to obscure the most indicative aspect of his humanity, his eyes. Rather than being able to see how much he's hurting, we can only see expressionless red goggles that pierce the icy cold environments Freeze creates. When we finally see him weeping in his cell at the end, the goggles are long gone and we are left with the man trapped beneath the icy demeanor. That character design falls directly in line with the so-called dark deco that defined the look of the series, which struck a timeless yet exaggerated take on art deco. The modernist 20s style of deco informs architecture, vehicles, and even fashion in the animated series with gothic color schemes twisting the style to a darker, more exaggerated noir appearance. Even when the series eventually underwent a major appearance overhaul with the new Batman adventures, these aesthetics remained, and their dark and stylish appearance continued to work in fantastic tandem with these superhero detective stories. Heart of Ice encapsulates everything that is great about Batman the Animated Series. Its narrative and characters are both equally interesting, and Deanie's story pays great reverence to Batman and his world, with both style and substance. For such a simple story that is propelled by characters only possible in comic books, Heart of Ice aptly has a beating, broken human heart at its core. Ideas of loss, revenge, and redemption can all be found here, and show how a single episode of a cartoon can resonate with mass audiences for decades. These are the reasons why not only Batman the Animated Series, but great comic books and their many different types of adaptations continue to have such meaning. Beneath the hyper-colored, action-filled exterior, Deeper truths can be found when crafted by truly talented teams, like those behind Heart of Ice. If you were to collect all of the greatest Batman stories, a large portion would be from Batman the Animated Series, and Heart of Ice would rank among the very best. This simple yet incredibly executed episode has become synonymous with not only the character of Mr. Freeze, but the mythology of Batman as a whole. Like the series itself, Heart of Ice is timeless. <laughs>